My name is Gene Liu and I'm an otolaryngologist, head and neck surgeon, or ear, nose, and throat doctor here in Los Angeles. And today I'm here to talk about the sinuses. The sinuses are air-filled spaces in the bone of your head. There are four sets, the frontal sinuses in the forehead, the maxillary sinuses in the cheek, the ethmoid sinuses between the eyeballs, and the sphenoid sinuses dead center in the middle of your head. The sinuses are lined with the same pink lining as the rest of your nose, something we call the mucosa. So when we breathe through the nose, air goes in and it goes through the nose and sinuses before it gets to the back of the throat. The mucosa, as it heats, humidifies, and filters the air, makes it a lot better for us by the time it gets into our airways and lungs. If you've ever had a stuffy nose and you're doing most of the breathing through the mouth, everything in the mouth and throat gets really raw. That's what the sinonasal mucosa is preventing. Occasionally the sinuses will get overwhelmed and get inflamed and become potentially infected, something we call sinusitis. When the lining or the mucosa of the sinuses gets inflamed and swells shut, then you get a lot of pain and pressure in the sinuses that are blocked. If the sinuses are open, meaning they're not swollen shut and you're producing a lot of mucus, that's when you can get a lot of runny nose or postnasal drips, so a lot of <laughs> down the back or blowing constantly out the front. Viruses, bacteria, chemicals, pollution, dust, smoke, a lot of things that we breathe in can cause the sinuses to become inflamed. Most sinus infections are caused by viruses and just need time to blow over. If you have a bacterial infection, most of them are going to be pretty mild and also do not require antibiotics. If the infection is severe enough, we might treat a bacterial infection with antibiotics. But for the vast majority of infections, all you need to do is unclog the plumbing, meaning decrease the inflammation and things get better. That may be using some saline irrigations to help flush out what's irritating the nose. It may be taking some nose brace or decongestants. It might be taking some allergy medications. A lot of people have heard that if you have very thick mucus, and especially if it's yellow, green, or brown, that it's going to be a sinus infection. It's possible, but it's not entirely true. You can have discolored mucus from viruses and from allergies. The color itself doesn't guarantee whether or not it's a sinus infection and whether or not you need antibiotics. When somebody develops congestion or stuffy nose or runny nose or postnasal drip, and even if you get headaches and facial pressure and pain, it might be a sinus infection or it might just be a bad head cold or some allergies. You can't tell from the symptoms alone. A lot of times a stuffy, runny, drippy nose with pressure and congestion can be from allergies. A lot of patients with sinus issues also have allergies, so it's helpful to evaluate somebody for allergies and even manage or treat their allergies a lot of times before we dive in deeper with more aggressive treatments from a sinus standpoint. If you see an ear, nose, and throat doctor, they can perform an endoscopy or use a little camera in the nose to check out that main hallway, but also look at the doorways to the sinuses. A lot of times that can be extremely helpful in better understanding what's going on. But in most people who haven't had sinus surgery, even with the scope, you can't see into every little corner of every little sinus. So it's not unusual in somebody who has a lot of recurrent or chronic sinusitis to also need a CT scan to know what's going on. A CAT scan definitely will show you everything that's going on in every little sinus of the head. But we don't always get a CAT scan or do a scope. If somebody comes in with signs or symptoms of a simple sinus infection or an acute sinusitis, uh, those types of studies are usually overkill. Once we have a better idea of what's going on in the sinuses, it'll really help us decide what's the best course of action. So sometimes surgery will be recommended and sometimes it won't. Even if surgery is recommended, sometimes it's just one particular sinus and sometimes it's all of them. But sinus surgery covers a very wide range of what can and needs to be done from one patient to the next. So once we see somebody with chronic or recurrent sinusitis, the three main things that we are looking for is, number one, is there a structural or anatomic problem, meaning a narrowing or blockage that you're just constantly fighting against. So think of it like a kitchen sink with a pipe that's too small or got kinked or bent. It's more likely to clog up. The CAT scan or the endoscopy or the scope really give you a good idea about the anatomy. The second thing that we worry about is what's going into the nose, or what are you breathing in? So if you're breathing in a lot of chemicals, pollution, dust, smoke, it's going to cause more irritation, it's going to cause more swelling, it's going to cause more mucus. 
You then think of a kitchen sink. If you're throwing enough chunks of food, hair, bits and pieces of stuff down there, no matter what the anatomy is or what the size of the plumbing is, it's more likely to clog. And lastly, it's also what's going on with your immune system. Most of us don't have any problems with our immune system, but some people do. So if you have any sort of immune deficiency or immune system weakness, you're more likely to get sick and you're more likely to get sinusitis. At the end of the day, if somebody's having enough sinus issues and we find a structural or anatomic problem, then that's the situation where surgery might make sense. That having been said, surgery doesn't fix everything. Even a normal sized pipe can get clogged over and over again if your environment is bad enough, if you have an immune system issue, if there are enough other things going on, fixing the anatomy or making the openings more open will help, but may or may not solve everything depending on what else is going on. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any additional questions, please leave it in the comments below.